Welcome back to Investor Intel. As the summer is over and we start the fall programs, we see more and more drill programs coming to the fore. One such drill program is with Prophecy, and here to tell us about it is John Lee, Prophecy's Chair. Hi, Hi John. Peter. Nice to see you again. Yes. We've spoken about Prophecy a few times. I met you at PDAC this year. We had a great chat, and you're here to update us on what's going on. For those yes. of you following along at home, roughly uh, 95 million shares outstanding, trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange on the big board, trading around 30 cents, and you have a 13 million share financing pending at 20 cents. That is correct, Peter. That should be easy to fill. As it's uh, fully booked already, the, the, the placement is fully subscribed. And uh, we had one of the most prominent investors that took a book of the financing. Um, the identity will be revealed shortly at the closing. Well, the rumor mill has been working hard on the identity of that person, but <laughs> I'll, leave it yes. for you, I'll leave it for you to confirm at the appropriate time. So tell me a little bit about the silver deposit and why we're so excited. Yes, well, Peter, Prophecy has been around in the last eight years. Uh, it's only recently that we, uh, we, we started the program on, the sil on this silver project, on this wonderful silver project called Pulakayo in Bolivia. We acquired the project in 2015 at the bottom of the cycle when silver was $14 an ounce. And, um, it's, a and, it's a historic yes. producer, right? It is uh, just a bit of historical context, Peter. This is the second largest silver mine in the world based on historical production. Close to 700 million ounces of silver were dug out of the ground in the 1980s, in the 1800s and the 1900s. Yeah, my notes in show fact, it, it ran continuously for 65 years. Oh, more than 65 years, over 100 years. But it's only the known records have shown a, a, a good track record of production for for 60 years from 19, early 1900 to 1952, uh, before the mine was nationalized by the Bolivian government. And uh, Peter, it was the Pulakayo silver that allowed the Spaniards to conquer, do their conquering of the world. Um, and also it was the uh, Pulakayo silver that, uh, that helped build the Bolivian railway to Antofagasta, uh, the port, right. um, to the seaport. Right, built that infrastructure with the money from the sale of the silver. Exactly. And we know it hasn't been played out because there's a recent 43101 on the property. That is correct, Peter. The project um, was uh, under this previous operator, and it's been a re reoccurring theme as we did with the Vanadium. We buy this project at the bottom, but these are very well advanced, low technical risk projects. Uh, the previous operator is a, is a Toronto listed company. Uh, from 2005 to 2015, it spent over $25 million in developing the deposit. Wow. It has a feasibility study. It's fully environmentally compliant. It has a social license to operate in Bolivia. And it has over 95,000 meters of drilling, which resulted in a, uh, in a resource estimate of over 50 million ounces of silver at a very high grade. And that, that's 50 million of I plus I, right? Indicated and inferred together. Measure indicated at 30 million ounces at a cutoff of 400 grams of silver, grading at 458 grams of silver. This is silver, not silver equivalents. Right, real silver. And in fur resource, is about 20 million uh, ounces, and you're looking at the grade of about 200, 250 grams per, uh, uh, per ton. No. It's very, very high grade. Being an investment banker, I like looking at the infrastructure side of things because that's where a lot of cost can go. Oh, yes. In fact, a lot of the majority of the costs now go to infrastructure because of escalating inflation. There's a mill well, this project, yeah, And this project, Peter, you're right on in that this is a historical, uh, this is a, um, this is a historic producer. It has, it, ha it has a paved road, has access to power and water. And the generational miners uh, understood the, the importance of mining and benefits of mining. So this is not in a, in a sort of grass, you know, herder or or areas of where people are, I mean, these people kick the NGOs out. I mean, these are our friends. They don't right. like the NGOs. So we cannot imagine a better jurisdiction, a better place to operate uh, than Apulakaya. And there is a mill nearby. There are, there was historically a mill on site, but uh, there, because this is a very prolific region, uh, absolutely, there's over several dozens of mills within driving uh, vicinity. And Peter, just to provide a bit of background, um, Bolivia today produces more silver than Argentina, wow. despite the lack of foreign investment. Really? Uh, in, in this region, 
maybe I could put it the golden tri- well, not the golden triangle, but the silver triangle. You have Sumitomo, who's operating San Crystal Ball. That's probably the second largest open pit deposit, silver deposit today. And you have uh, Pan American Silver. You have uh, Court and Lane, used to be Court and Lane, have Glencore. And recently also a, a big discovery made by New Pacific. This is all within 200 kilometer drive from Pulakayo. And Pulakayo is in the epic center of where all the ash is taking place. So two points left that are important to me. One is management. And you've oh, got yes. a bit of a superstar in your CEO. Yes. Well, Peter, you've been tracking our story for a while. The company was on skeleton running until 2016 because, I mean, the commodity market was just uh, in a major correction. Now we're, the pendulum has swung completely the other way. But in the last two years, we really have brought on very competent people on board. The three guys we brought on had over 100 years of experience in commissioning, permitting, uh, exploration, and operating on mines in Nevada and elsewhere in the world. They're all coming from pedigree backgrounds of, of Barrick and, 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 and the likes. So we, we now not only have the project, um, you have the M&A guy, and now you have an operation and a permitting team that can take this project all the way to production. And the last point that matters to me is the macroeconomic picture of the silver-gold ratio. Silver-gold yes. ratio hit it slow over the past 10 years in April of 2011 at roughly 31. Today it's yes. over 83. Why does that index matter? Well, Peter, historically when the ratio, when, when, when gold trades at a, lot, a big premium to silver, that means that the, there's very little speculative interest. So it happened in 2000, and, you know, the early 2000 when the first major run up. And now the, the, the gold to silver ratio, again, is extreme level. And these historic records have shown that silver is likely to outperform gold by a wide margin when, when, when the ratio reached reach over 85. And right. what that means, Peter, is if, if gold were to reach a, a uh, if, if gold were to hit the target of 1660, and I'm a technician, uh, a chartered financial analyst, uh, that means that silver can go as high as $25 in the very near term. And plus the Fed lowered the interest rate for the first time in more than a decade, and interest rate trades inversely to the price of precious metals. For for every additional 25 basis point cut, you're looking at an additional 10 to 15% upside for the precious metals. This is the ideal time to get in. The bottom's in, and uh, there's just plenty of upside come, going, going, going forward. So this is Peter Clausey for Investor Intel telling you don't wait too long. Uh, <laughs> stock's trading at 30 cents. They're closing a 20 cent financing, and silver pretty much has nowhere to go but up. John, always fun chatting with you. Look forward to seeing you again in person. Yes, Peter, the symbol is PCY, and we got a major strategic investor coming on. The news is going to come out shortly. So establish your position while we can. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.